The only certain thing in life is uncertainty. That's never been truer than it is at the moment in the situation that we're in. We've all been there. The night before we charge all our batteries with all good intentions of flying the next day and then something throws a spanner in the works, whether that's the, the weather or the travel restrictions that we have these days or some family emergency, whatever. You have these charged packs. You know what you should do, but you never get around to it. Charged packs shouldn't be left charged. They should be discharged to their storage voltage and this will prolong the life of the cells. Unfortunately, this is a chore. It takes so long, your charger may well have a discharge function, but I'm betting that it's probably no more than an amp, and with some of the larger cells, this can just take forever. Enter then this device, which is 99% heatsink. Very simple indeed, just two buttons to program it, and a single connector there for the XT60. This will discharge up to 200 watts, 25 amps, and up to 8S, a very capable device, and it will discharge these packs in minutes. None of these are particularly high capacity. Let's move on then, and I'll show you its basic functionality. The device then, as I said, is mainly heatsink, there are no other connections on it. The fan output at the back there, the label stating the input voltage minimum of 7 volts or 2S and up to 8S, 5 amps, up to 25 amps. All we have to do is to connect up our charged battery, press any key to switch it on. Here it's indicating 3S. If we press the right hand button, we go to 4, 5, 6, that indicates 7, and finally 8S, and then back to 2S. So we'll leave that on 3S as that's what it is. With the right hand button, 5 amps, 10 amps, 15, 20, 25. You have greater control over this device using the app, which we'll come on to. Let's then select 10 amps, this being a 40C battery, allegedly, and then long press and it's showing the state of charge of the battery here. So we have the fourth LED flashing, and you can hear that the fan has kicked in. It is quite a noisy device. It's probably the only drawback with it. Clearly, you shouldn't leave packed charging or discharging unattended, but this is going to definitely have to be on the other side of your workshop. We'll come back when that has finished. Just while it's discharging, I've connected up my little battery monitor just to check what's happening with the individual cells. There's no balance connection on here. We can clearly see 3.76, 3.76, and 3.8. We have the last LED flashing and very soon it will be fully discharged. The end of charge has occurred and it's indicated by all the LEDs flashing in that rather fetching turquoisey colour. We can see here that the individual cell voltage 3.8, 3.82, 3.83, we are down to our storage values, which is excellent. And that's all there is to it. A long press and we're back to the standby mode. We'll disconnect our pack. Very simple in operation then. Let's move on and take a look at what advantages we get by using the Bluetooth app. I've already gone ahead and installed the app and previously connected it to the device which is shown on the front screen there. I've also connected up my watt meter so that I can keep a check on how many milliampere hours it's discharged and to show you that it's not a fixed discharge current. Uh, we'll take a look at that. Connecting up our battery then as before. Switching on. And this time we press and hold 
both buttons together until we get this rather interesting night rider effect of the lights going backwards and forwards. We can then press on our meter and it will connect. And there is the information. It's detected that it's 3S. What we can do now is to set up a task on the phone for the different types of packs that we normally use. It goes to the little wheel there, preset tasks, and add a new one. We'll call this 3S 10A for 10 amps, and OK that. Discharge current, then we have greater control over the current in the app than we do on the unit itself. So we select our 10 amps there, and we can change the discharge voltage as well. So this is important if you're discharging lithium ion cells rather than lithium polymer. You have the choice there of the values that you want to use. I'm going to stick at 3.8 and the number of cells, three cells. This is now going to add that profile. I already had one at 5 amps, now we have 10 amps. Go back to the main screen and then just press the go button. And the discharge has started. You hear the fan kicking in there. And it obviously gives us the time, the amount of power being drawn, and the percentage left, and the current amperage. As I said, this is not a static value. It's ramping up now towards the 10 amp that we set. With 9.9 .9 amps. And here we are, it showing on the showing on the app there, fixed at 10 amps. If we now look what's actually happening we can see that every so often the current drops down now drop down there again i think what it's doing is to check what the voltage is that it's dropping to and that way it can work out when to terminate the discharge 115 watts indicated on here, 115 watts there, so everything seems to tally up. We'll come back when this guy has finished. Nearing the end of the discharge then, it reckons only 1% left. We can see the current ramping down as well. And I've just connected up my little monitor here can see they're all just getting a little below the 3.8 so it should terminate any moment. Discharge then has finished, the screen has gone green. We get our annoying beep. 3.82, 3.84 and 3.82. It's done its job. According to my meter here, it's discharged some 850 milliampere hours. We can stop that now, and it's back to its standby mode. Overall then, a very easy to use device and very useful. You may think it's a little bit expensive. It works out at around about 70 euros, which is some 84 dollars. But when you weigh that against the price of buying new packs over time, I think it's a, a worthwhile investment. Thanks for watching.